Hi, uh, everybody. Yeah, we'll give another minute um, to see. Let more, more people pop in. I know there's a few people said they wouldn't be able to make it live tonight. And there's some people who are not in our time zone. So we will just give it maybe another minute. Everybody just kind of take some deep breaths. I was just breathing deeply and connecting to Machu Picchu actually, where the world soul has been um, moved to, to uh, get stable. And clearing some areas as uh, I connect to Machu Picchu, it feels like there's some ley lines that, um, that needed to be cleared as I was uh, doing that. So, yeah. Yeah, normally um, for our monthly Patreon meetings, I'll start with some um, questions and or just discussion with uh, the members and we'll have a, a discussion, just whatever's going on or ask any questions and then uh, get into the presentation. So what I usually do is I have, I like to use visuals, what I've drawn for the month and um, getting a sense of what what's happening so, uh, you know, then I'll switch to uh, share screen. I have a presentation that is set up um, uh, via PowerPoint and I share lots of images and it kind of also then it keeps me on track as to what it is that I want to say and um, uh, discuss. So, you know, we'll get to that part um, after, uh, you know, I do a little bit more of an introduction. So some of you um, know, know me from, uh, I think, energetic synthesis, others who've been working uh, through awesomeism practitioner process, um, or our parents yourselves of uh, these very high vibrational autistics. Um, so I'm going to not really talk about my history with Sam, because I think most people know it, or you can find it on our website. Um, you know, my daughter, I'm just going to say my daughter is, she's 23 now, she's considered nonverbal, um, was diagnosed with autism at about 28 months, and we've heard words from her all her life, but never consistently. So she, you know, was considered um, nonverbal, or I, I prefer the term beyond verbal, because she does um, communicate, I think a lot of her sounds are like light language. And she is uh, from the seven higher heavens um, and also part of these um, galactic suns, which we've been talking more about during these uh, Patreon monthly meetings. Um, so we've been meeting since about last November and uh, we've, we've gotten more information about what these seven higher heavens actually are and who these Galact what these galactic suns are. So they're more like these primordial suns of the first um, kind of consciousness units of source. She, it, things got really, really intense starting in 2017 for her. So meaning that she became a sort of less functional, let's say, than she had been before. You know, we used to go out a lot. We used to go out to eat and things really started to change in 2017. So um, I didn't exactly know what was, you know, what was happening. I knew it just got really intense and she'd been kind of feeding me little bits of information. I've been, been getting insights from her, you know, for many years, my awakening started like in 2008, 2009, and, um, probably the, the, the height or the, really the beginning of, um, energetic communication with her started around 2009, 2010, where I started really having visions uh, after I was attuned to do Reiki in 2009. So, and I remember like some key things. So she said to me, um, I think in 2015, that she came in with on a 15 chakra system. I said, wow, that's interesting, you know? Um, you know, I just thought it was kind of a unique thing. And I, 
synchronistically met a woman um, that I did an activation with in 2016. And I told her that she said that the Sammy had said she came in with 15 chakras and she said, you know, your daughter's right. Um, we're, we exist in a 15 dimensional universe and each of the chakras connect to one of those dimensions. So um, that seemed to be kind of common knowledge to certain groups of people, although it's not much talked about in um, a lot of the spiritual uh, quote gurus that are out there, mainly they talk about seven chakras, um, but it seemed to be for, with a certain group of people, it seemed to be known that we exist in a, a 15 dimensional universe. And so um, 2017, things started to really get intense and uh, the autist collective, you know, they operate as a collective consciousness. Um, not all the autists, people diagnosed with quote autism are part of this collective, you know, and I don't, you know, want to say who's, who belongs in that and who doesn't, you know, I, I, that's kind of harder, harder to, uh, you know, just, just talk about. But um, I think you've, you kind of have a sense of which ones are part of that um, bigger collective kind of consciousness. And individually, they might not know, have um, awareness in their physical bodies of what, that they're connected to this higher plane of existence beyond uh, 15 dimensions. Um, but, and as a collective, so they operate as a different kind of consciousness, you know, sort of like water, right? H2O, hydrogen and oxygen separately, they kind of act kind of differently, but together they, you know, make water. And so it's kind of like that, that, that way I see it, you know, they as a collective consciousness, they're um, operating um, kind of differently. But anyway, with Sam, um, I don't know how much she was aware of, who she was even you know, before then she was getting I think lots of activations and downloads even before when her body when she was acting so intensely at school um, to the point where she would, was hang, banging her head or just have these um, explosions um, so she um, uh, in 2017 things started to get more intense I could start to feel the, the collective autist consciousness Susie Miller, who does the Awesomeism program, um, she calls them the collective consciousness of the children. So I started feeling them a lot more, like really intensely. And, you know, they started saying things like, we're going to move to the next harmonic universe. And, um, you know, some of you who might have joined in, we did that planetary synthesis from like July 2017 to December 2017. Um, because they were going, we have to get ready. We're moving to the next harmonic universe. So synchronistically then, um, you know, I, I came across energetic synthesis. You know, I think my husband came across energetic synthesis and Lisa Renee's material. And they were talking about the same kind of thing. We're moving to the next harmonic universe in 2018. And um, I said, wow, okay, if there's somebody who, who knows about this, uh, you know, so... I joined Energetic Synthesis and, um, you know, it was a lot of information. So I just kind of uh, was guided to what information that I needed and meditations. And it helped me to uh, expand and get a different perspective. Um, and in the meantime, then, you know, things continued with uh, the autists and we did this monthly planetary synthesis, getting ready. Um, you know, I think in 2016 or so too, Sammy in a, in a meditation, she suddenly dropped these like three spheres into my hands. And, and I said, well, what is that? You know, and she said, it's the 16th, 17th and 18th chakras, you know, like literally I saw her above my head and she's dropping these spheres in my hand. I said, oh, okay, well, whatever that is, you know. Um, so then when we were talking about uh, moving to a next, uh, another next harmonic universe and 18 dimensions, you know, I kind of thought, oh, it's happening now, you know, it's happening right away. But um, I didn't understand um, that it was kind of preparation for what was going to happen. And, um, you know, I do remember too, uh, like, why didn't we know about 15 chakras and 15 dimensions? And I remember um, 
a couple of times where I, was sit, I sat down, I was guided to sit down and meditate. And so I did. And um, in the 11th dimension, uh, I noticed that um, there were these dark entities kind of just floating around in the 11th dimension. So they said, you have to clear that. I said, okay. So I cleared that, you know, for myself, I guess, and um, opened up to the 11th dimension. And then um, uh, this, you know, I was, saw the 14th dimension and there was like a, like a shield, something covering, something like a block, you know, uh, between the 14th and 15th dimensions. So he told me, you got to remove that. So I said, all right, I'll remove that. And um, lo and behold, uh, you know, there was the 15 uh, dimensions. Um, and also there was things in the seventh dimension that I had to clear out. Um, and then, so when I was in energetic synthesis, I learned that there were all these reversals uh, and they spent in matrix and kind of these blocks um, uh, that kept us vibrating in um, the 3D and you get to 7D, but then you you kind of end up bouncing back down. And then if you get to 11D even, you know, there's another kind of uh, ceiling there that um, uh, we couldn't get past. So for me, you know, it was a real thing um, experiencing that um, in uh, my own meditations and what uh, energetic synthesis they were uh, kind of talking about. So, um, you know, we did, we, did, we did those planetary synthesis monthly meetings. Some of you might kind of remember you all joined in um, and they're on our YouTube channel. And, um, you know, probably I didn't quite understand everything, you know, at the time. Um, but now in the last, I would say, month or so, um, it's like all clicked what has been happening over the last five years and now why we can um, really begin to transition to uh, this 18 dimensional universal architecture, which is now in place. So I'm gonna try and go through some uh, you know, images and um, drawings. Uh, uh, I think it, I thought it would be helpful to, uh, for those of you who are newer to that kind of information about harmonic universes and how, um, our universe is structured in each dimension, the subharmonic bands in each one. So I did some uh, hopefully simple drawings that will help kind of uh, illustrate in a, a simple way of what, what that means and what it means to be connected through our chakra system to each of those dimensions and what it means how you know we're transitioning to an 18 dimensional universe since our bodies, it directly affects our physical bodies uh, and our light body. So I'm going to try and walk you through um, some of these images. Uh, I try to narrow down the number of images because it can be a bit much. So I just tried to capture kind of the big picture of what I'm seeing um, happening. Uh, and then some of the, the latest um, things that have happened here in the last month, which really sets us on the new course and why everything now is in place to make to be able to start uh, manifesting something different. Um, so, you know, just bear with me, uh, and you know, I'll try to get through these images in the presentation part, maybe, um, you know, in a in about another half hour, and then try and open it up to questions. Um, we'll do a meditation, you know, for the last part. And, uh, you know, if people aren't used to our meditations, then um, our energy can be, a, it can be quite, um, it can be quite a bit to uh, kind of take in. So you just have to feel into whether that feels right for you or not. So that's Sammy in the background. It's really tense for her for whatever, uh, whatever reason. So um, she's going through some things in the background there. It's just a level of intensity, I think, with this kind of, with this information and everything. So the topics for today, you know, I think I said it already, but um, I just like to, uh, I just, I just have this for myself too, so that I can kind of remember um, what, 
it is that I want to talk about today. So, you know, about Sam and I, the 15 chakras and 15 dimensions that I became aware of, and the 16th, 17th, and 18th chakras she handed me. Um, we exist in a existed in a 15 universal time matrix. Um, we started moving to the next harmonic universe. They started preparing in 2017. Uh, and I remember, I still remember having these visions from the autists, like, you know, they were showing me the, the universe and then they were like putting this energy band around um, what was represented the universe and these, like I was seeing like these pillars coming down um, through the entire universe to get ready to uh, move. Uh, so, so the 2018 major changes began and I got to open up the dragon chakra with Sam under Sammy's feet. Um, which I was didn't realize I was attuned to do that by the Council of Twelve. We'll talk more about that later. Um, well, we're going to talk about dragons and dragons, uh, as the autists have defined. Um, we did these galactic sun meditations in December 2018, and it was to to, it was to build this new dimensionalized system that we're now stepping into. Um, so they uh, insisted that we place the 14th chakra at the still point, and there was a good reason for that. Um, and we're transitioning to an 18 dimensional chakra system. Uh, we could talk about the light body and the Herkimer diamond shape of the light body um, that seems to go with this 18 dimensional universe. Um, and then most, most recently, the mother's white dragon sun has activated and, um, oops, and also, um, I was gonna say something else. Um, oh, and that the, uh, the world soul has been moved to Machu Picchu. So we'll talk a little bit more about that and the significance of that. So I just tried to draw this very simple um, diagram uh, outlining what the harmonic universes are. So the first harmonic universe consists of uh, the first, second, and third dimension. And this corresponds to the, the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus. Second harmonic universe is the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension, which is the heart, the throat and the third eye, sixth chakra. Third harmonic universe is the crown, right? The, um, the seventh dimension, the crown, the eighth dimension, the high heart at the level of the thymus. Uh, and then the um, uh, ninth chakra, which is actually at the, um, uh, uh, the base of the neck, the medulla oblongata in that area heaven's gate area that they call. The 11th dimension or the uh, fourth harmonic universe is the um, 10th, 11th and 12th dimensions. So on each band or each uh, dimension, there are um, 12 subharmonic bands or subharmonic frequencies. So there's 12 in the first dimension, the second dimension, and the third dimension. So 12 dimensions and uh, 12 subharmonic frequencies within each of the dimensions. That's how we get 144 base uh, foundational frequencies. Now you can create more, but those are the base uh, kinds of frequencies. The other thing to note is that um, as we go from quote lower dimension to higher dimension going up, the frequencies get faster. So the first dimension, the frequencies, that means they're, they're slow. The waves are more spread out, they're slower. Second dimension, they get a little bit, the frequencies a little higher, third dimension. And um, this is just an example. So as you go to the 12th dimension, then, the, the frequencies are much, much faster. And um, this is what gives us the illusion of density because the frequencies are um, vibrating slower. So the notion that 
we are not solid and that um, it's a matter of vibration and sound and light coming together gives us this kind of illusion of, of density. So that's where that, um, that all comes from. Okay, so then if we go to the next slide. So when we say that the first harmonic universe was moved to the second harmonic universe, it means that the first, second, and third dimensions beginning in 2013 was moved up to where the fourth, fifth, and um, sixth dimensions are. Now, our bodies are connected to each of these dimensions and our soul layers are also uh, within these harmonic universes. So the fourth harmonic universe would be like the avatar layer of our soul. This third harmonic universe would be like the, the oversoul. The um, fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions is where our personal soul matrix is connected. And so then we had our um, personality egoic matrix, which was part of our uh, you know, physical body in the first harmonic universe, 1D, 2D, and 3D. So when this first harmonic universe was moved up to the second harmonic universe, you can see that everything started blending together, started waving, but it also meant that it was now easier to begin to access our soul. And there were higher frequencies now and higher harmonics, higher waves um, that could come in. And so We've been feeling these waves in these, you know, moments of bliss and where we feel like we're, um, you know, being lifted up uh, by these higher frequencies and higher har harmonics that have been, that's been coming in. So now this didn't all just settle out in, you know, after 2018, there's been a process that has been going on for these last, you know, particularly three, four years now, so that things can really be set in place to um, restructure, reorganize these um, harmonic universes with now a, uh, 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 to access um, into, uh, the uh, fifth and sixth harmonic universes. Oh, so there is another harmonic universe. There's a fifth harmonic universe, which is the 13th, 14th, and 15th dimensions, but um, it's only the first to the 12th dimensions that have these uh, subharmonic frequencies. On the other important part, to recognize about these subharmonic frequencies and the 12 dimensions is that our DNA uh, uh, as a 12 dimensional human with all those functioning, if all those chakras were functioning properly and our DNA and genes were functioning properly, we manifest our bodies by um, these subharmonic frequencies in each of the dimensions and how each of us does that is going to be unique based on your uh, genetic blueprint and um, uh, uh, it, it depends on our genetic blueprint. So by not having all, all our genes functioning properly, um, we were not operating to the full capacity that, uh, that we could have. So uh, this is all part of the, the human story now in the last epoch that we have all been riding through. Uh, okay, so th this is one of the reasons why I know this. Many years ago, Sammy you know, had said, um, you can't not be multidimensional. It's impossible because you're literally manifesting from the multidimensional plane and the multidimensional frequencies that exists in um, the, uh, the, the universal time matrix and that we 
uh, exist in. So this was a simple drawing that I did in 2019 when I was, uh, you know, some of you joined that class that I was, uh, that I was um, doing after the Galactic Suns. Uh, so here is a 1D, 1D 2D, 3D now all existing in this um, uh, second harmonic universe together. And so here's the fifth, I mean, yeah, the fifth harmonic universe um, and uh, the sixth harmonic universe hadn't really activated yet at that time. Um, and Ophira, the kids were calling this band around the uh, universe of these other micro universes that we interface with um, uh, and you know get information get information from. Um, it's like bridging macro and micro. It was my understanding then. So uh, then in 2018, um, you know, again, the autists, you know, <laughs> being there, I guess, somehow um, being one of their spokespersons, um, they were very insistent that I do these meditations uh, from December 1st to December 13th uh, in 2018. And I wasn't really sure what we were doing, but I said, okay, so there's a group of you out there that joined, joined us um, and uh, we recorded these meditations. They're offered, they told me I have to offer it for free on our website. So it's, you know, it's there for everybody. And they were, um, we were doing these galactic sun laws. And this was from the galactic suns, what I call the galactic suns or these primordial suns that uh, some of our autists are directly, you know, still connected to and remained, they were remain, remained connected to them, even um, coming into this earthly body. And so not really connected to their physical bodies so that they could continue their uh, mission from um, the seven higher heavens. So uh, these galactic suns or these primordial suns Apparently, they are the creators of our dimensionalized system. And so each galactic sun represents, uh, when we were doing these meditations, represents a dimension. And they had these um, laws that they were building into each of the dimensions. So the first dimension was the law of structure, and the second dimension is the law of omniscient omnipresence. Third dimension, the law of form. Uh, I'm going to go here to the fourth dimension, the law of the trinitized form. Uh, the fifth dimension, the law of co-creative abundance. The sixth dimension is the law of sacred union. Uh, the seventh dimension, the law of cosmic vision. The eighth dimension, you know, we go back down now to the high heart, the law of consensus, the ninth dimension, which is kind of in the back of the uh, back of the head, the law of abundant realities, the 10th dimension, the law of sacred nature. Oh, yeah, the law of sacred nature, all oh, unified fields, the 11th dimension, the law of sacred nature, and the 12th dimension, which is our earth star, the law of the cosmic Christ consciousness made manifest. So then the other uh, fifth harmonic universe, 14, 15, and 16, is the, um, the mother arc, the 15th chakra, I mean the mother, the father arc, and the 13th chakra, the mother arc, and they insisted, now the 14th chakra, um, it used to be at about three feet above the head, but they were insistent that I place it here at the still point. So that's the, uh, the 14th chakra and it'll make sense. It made sense now recently uh, based on how we connect into the, we're able to connect into the, um, the 18 dimensional universe. So they were embedding these laws right into the dimensions and law is, you know, kind of sounds like an edict, but Law, from an energetic perspective, would be more like um, uh, like a rule or um, 
uh, uh, a universal kind of truth, you know, from the God source. So uh, like the law of structure, you know, has to, that's where we connect to our bone matrix. So it gives the physical body our structure. And there's also a structure to the universe. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, like to think, oh, we like to want to get out of here in this density. Wouldn't it be great to be free of this density? But um, we can't have any kind of uh, structure or form without some kind of architecture and rules that um, keep those rules coherent. Like you wouldn't be able to distinguish your body from somebody else's body if we didn't have some kind of structure and some mechanism and some kind of rules of how we transduce light and sound into um, our physical physical uh, expression. So that's, that's the way uh, I've come to understand it. So, I mean, these are, these, some of these are really interesting, like the law of omniscient, omnipresence that the sacral chakra, you know, and what does that say? I mean, your, your omnipresence to be fully present here in your body, to be able to be a, a coherent energy field in your body. So omniscient, omnipresence, you know, it's not just for, uh, for God of being omniscient, but it's to be also omniscient about your own presence, omniscient about your own um, uh, physical body and your light body presence and how we coherently bring all of that together. So these laws in the dimensions, and since we are manifesting from the, um, our connection with the dimensions, the, it felt like the intention was so that these laws would be um, kind of a, a gnosis, an inner knowing where we can't be manipulated like we have been you know, in the past. So this unified law of unified fields even says that you are a unified field and you're bigger than your body. You know, you are uh, much bigger than your body. You are the, the totality of, uh, you know, this full expression from the God source as an avatar human, human being. So that's what all these, those, those galactic sun laws were all about. And also this fifth law of co-creative abundance at the fifth chakra is very um, interesting as well, that we, when we co-create this way in union with God's source, then we cr actually create abundance for everyone, for everything. You know, there's no sense of lack that the more we create, we create abundance for each other. We create abundance for the earth, for all life on the planet. And that is, the, the cosmic law of, that is part of the cosmic law of one, really. So, um, you know, I didn't realize what we were doing at the time. So somebody is not muted, if you can mute yourself. Um, so uh, this is, this is this, so this was their, their intention when we were doing these uh, galactic sun laws back then. So now, um, with the with the sixth harmonic universe, which is uh, the sixteenth, seventeenth, and eighteenth dimensions, um, it made sense to me now recently why they wanted the still point at the uh, the fourteenth chakra. I mean, at the at the still point. So we're um, connecting the fourteenth chakra at the still point right to the eighteenth. Uh, dimension it's not direct but i mean it's um you know it's it's there and the 14th dimension is sort of like a portal into the the omniverse and uh as you can see where we used to have just a father arc at the 15th dimensional level and a mother arc at the 13th um, dimensional level we now have what's called a triune arc this is a triune arc sort of three in one, meaning that this sixth harmonic universe and the 13th and 15th dimensions are all, are all part of this uh, triune arc. And as you can see, the, you know, we have the galactic sun laws. So I'll show a little bit more 
uh, intricate drawing of, of this connection and how um, that's gonna work. Oh, and this is the mother's white dragon son there. So this is kind of uh, depicts the harmonic universes with the um, 16th, 17th and 18th dimensions. And again, they're not quote, quite dimensions like the, other, the way the other ones function. They seem to be like, um, I think we're still trying to understand what the, this sixth harmonic universe is and does. Uh, it seems to be this like the sound or harmonic fields and also, um, how we connect to the dark matter realms, the dark matter fields, so to speak, because um, the first to the seventh chakras are like the white matter. It's what's manifested. It's the particle aspect of us. The eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th were the, um, the anti-particle. And now actually the kids, you know, the autists and Sammy, you know, they've been saying for the last couple of years that the second dimension where we connect to the sacral um, is becoming or is now an antiparticle uh, uh, dimension as well. So we're connecting into this um, antiparticle. And my understanding of antiparticle means um, the, the feeling that I'm getting, not from a scientific uh, perspective is um, it's liquid light and it has to do with how um, the dark matter, I don't mean dark as in bad or negative, like the is not space where we have a um, sort of an is not matrix that creates our body and how the light comes through. So the antiparticle is like um, translates or transduces the information from um, the dark matter body of the dark matter blueprint uh, to come into manifestation or come into light. The light is what we see. It, it means it's what um, the white matter of, of what we see, which is like the first to seventh chakras or first to seventh dimensions. So it takes a while to wrap your mind around um, a lot of this. So if you're new to this, you know, information, um, it may not make a lot of sense. Again, I, it's, you know, I've been kind of working with this for the last four or five years and, um, you know, it's still these nuances and things um, that don't make sense to the, to the, to the mind, the 3D mind that we're used to thinking from. So the more you can get to feel the information and feel the, um, the energy of the consciousness, then um, the more that you will, uh, you know, kind of expand your consciousness. Okay, so next one. So this is a depiction of then uh, of what we're kind of moving into. So I was for the last, you know, couple of months, two or three months, I've been seeing like these two different cubes, you know, there's one cube and there's another cube. You know, almost like this is, these are two different platforms. And um, this is an analogy of, of that. So this, let's say this was the 15 dimensional universe and it had a certain set of uh, laws or rules and how to manifest. It had certain mathematical laws, it had certain codes, it had um, specific time vector codes, uh, you know, for potentials and possibilities in the 15 dimensional universe. Um, and now this is the 18 dimensional universe that's opening up and it's represented by uh, a tesseract or what's also known as a hypercube because now we can, it's kind of going beyond hyperdimensional. That eight, that 16th, 17th and 18th dimension has added another kind of um, component to this universe. Uh, and it has all different time vector codes. It has different mathematical laws. It has a whole new set of quote manifestation rules because the old system 
was really had been manipulated by multi, other multidimensional quote fallen beings. And we've been talking about this in the um, other Patreon meetings uh, of distorted consciousness since uh, the, the fall of even a couple of universes, if you can imagine that um, had uh, infiltrated and set up these inorganic kinds of systems so that it made it harder to function as the full human avatar that we were meant to function as. So that's why a whole new universe was built. Um, so this is a representation that now everything is in place. And this year of 2022 is the cosmic great reset, right? If you follow what's going on in the outer world, there's a group, some of you might know, there's a group that has been trying to um, establish a great reset for 2030. Well, they missed the boat because this is, there's a whole cosmic reset that is activating this year. And um, the rules that they've been were operating on are, are going are fading. They're, they're not gonna, they're not gonna operate anymore. And it's gonna and it's fading slowly because so that it gives us time also to adapt, adjust, and more people to be able to make the make the switch because we know there's a lot of good people still running around and who are not aware of what is happening, but they, in their hearts, they're, they're really good people. And so, um, and it would just create too much havoc and chaos if it all went down, even for the rest of us as well. So it's not all disappearing at once, but um, we are uh, making this transition. And one of the ways of thinking about this is like, um, if someone is changing a web platform, right? So they still have their old website up and they're building another one, you know, in another space. And they're going to delete the other one once the new one is all set up and they've moved the essential parts that they want to keep to the uh, other web platform. So it's kind of it's kind of like that. And so they've been building um, this. Uh, it's been going on for the last four or five years. So this is another depiction. If you saw some of our um, blogs, that this represents like the fractal. This would be the Mandelbrot fractal mathematics um, of how to manifest at the fractal levels, right? Um, it uh, the math the law of mathematics. You can imagine it it guides and dictates how um, form is going to come together, so to speak, right? So again, our bodies follow a mathematical mathematical laws and laws of God's source. And so uh, I still remember a few days ago, several days ago, Sammy was stomping and she was saying, destroy the Mandelbrot fractal, destroy the Mandelbrot fractal. And so there's a whole new set of um, mathematical laws or God's infinite calculus that has been set. And so we're moving in this direction and this, is going to slowly um, fade, fade out. How many years? I don't, I don't know, but it's going to fade, and we're um, starting to really manifest uh, this one. the The new system is also based on the organic crystal spiral, which is going to feel much more aligned for us. It's the balance of polarity. Uh, it incorporates the element of the ether back into our um, manifestations and our form. So that means even the electric and the magnetic are uh, going to be balanced. It's going to be easier to feel a sense of ease and be at um, zero point within ourselves. So these are you know, exciting times and this year has been uh, quite, quite intense to say the least. Um, so this is something that Sammy had me draw a few days ago, um, last week sometime, as she is now embodying, um, she is uh, requiring a different, you know, activating this new system. So, um, you know, I was, she was having a rough time and I, 
could has, was having this vision. So I started drawing it. Um, and this is the way I seem to do uh, energy work for her. I mean, she can literally feel every stroke uh, as I draw and you know like when I've got it because all of a sudden she's calm or I start drawing something and she um, is suddenly calm. So this um, part here is a, uh, is, a, is like a matrix that aligns the dark matter matrix of our, of our physical being um, to this triune arc and also then transduces uh, into our physical body. So as you can see, this means that the 17D is making a connection with the sacral. Uh, 16D is making a connection here with the high heart or the eighth chakra. And then uh, the still point, again, the 14th chakra is uh, making a point, a connection through the 18th chakra. And this is um, a technology from the seven higher heavens uh, that was created to um, put this triune arc in place and then is also helping um, give Sammy uh, stability. So I don't know how many people will be able to make this transition you know, right away uh, um, to this 18 chakra system, um, but you know, we'll talk about ways that people can you know, start to make the adjustment if it resonates for you. Now this, you can't see it under here, but this is the um, 24 pointed star that's on the, the eighth chakra, the 14th chakra and the sacral uh, to help with the adaptation and, and the adjustment. So I know this is a lot of information and um, again, and I had to draw these roots in uh, to help Sammy feel stable. So, yeah, so I could, I can really feel it too. So some of you will be able to relate to it right away and be able to use it. Others, we may have to, um, you know, do some uh, meditations and things to guide along the process. Um, but we could talk about more. There's also the light body. And this is something from energetic synthesis that I um, learned. This is called uh, the 12 tree grid, the, the tree of life, organic tree of life. It has 12 spheres for the 12 dimensions. Now, there is another sphere, there is another system out there, or a, a, a grid. If you see one that has 10 spheres, that is the fallen tree of life. That is the black tree of life. And uh, you know, think about it. If you're a 12 dimensional avatar, then we should be connecting to 12 dimensions, not 10 dimensions. So um, there is one out there and um, that's the wrong one. If you, if you see that one or you uh, see people using that one, that is not the correct one. Um, and when I started activating this in probably 2017, I felt um, a lot of ease. Uh, I started expanding as a, a light body because you, you can take in a lot more information through your light body uh, as a consciousness than just through your physical physical body. So some of you in private sessions, um, we've done this uh, already. And in some of the meditations, with the Patreon group, we've, I've been clearing these 12 spheres and we've been using those uh, axitonial lines as well. So that's the, uh, that's the system. Now the autists and the kids, they showed me a different one. <laughs> now, um, kind of based on that 12 sphere system. So this was in 2019, I think. Um, it's shaped like a Herkimer diamond. Sammy told me, so I know this is, it's kind of difficult. I tried to get it as best I could to make it shaped like a Herkimer diamond. You kind of get the, get the idea. And there are um, many more direct connections to uh, the body. So you can see the shoulders, the endocrine system, this avatar halo, um, the heart, the kidneys, the gallbladder, the intestines, um, you know, and this is a dragon chakra. Um, and it's gonna vary for people. Like I opened Sammy's 
in 2018 and um, I was completely dizzy. Sammy was completely dizzy. She couldn't get out of bed for days. Um, and I'll talk more about what a dragon is. So it's the dragon chakra is part of the light body. Um, and I hope for people, I've opened a diamond dragon chakra or a diamond star, sun star chakra. Um, some people, a double diamond dragon chakra, others, a diamond water dragon chakra. Um, so there are variations of even these uh, dragon chakras. And again, this is the, so Sammy feels comfortable. The, um, the Council of 12 is represented by this, the 12 galactic suns. Um, so how did I do this? You know, I didn't realize it, but um, in 2016, I was received an attunement from um, this Council of 12, which is the 12 galactic suns. And, you know, I still remember it was in our old house that we were living in at the time. And um, all of a sudden I was, you know, like holding this, this sphere, like this brownish kind of ball with all these, all these, all these multi, multi, multi colors in it. And I said, well, what is that? And they said, it's the Y star. And I asked a couple of people about, do you know what this is? What do I do with it? And they said, no. So I said, well, okay, I just let it go. Cause I had no idea what to, what to do with it at the time. So, um, so I can, that's, that's why I can open the dragon chakras with my hands. And, um, when I've been working with Sam at times as she's been going out, way out into the cosmos and other, and the other autists, um, are doing it as well. I know there are other autists who are, have a very, very challenging time. There's been a lot of seizure activity and some of the other ones that I, um, know of uh you know same thing bang, banging their heads since 2017 2018 um i read an article a couple of years ago i remember um it was like a journal of severe autism or, or something like that and there was a a psychiatrist who wrote an article about how full the children's psychiatric units were of autistic individuals because the families could not handle them. And there were, there were literally like no medications that um, would work. And they were even um, turning down admissions from families because uh, they said, we, we can't handle them. We can't, we can't take them, um, you know, which is a very, very sad state of affairs, uh, but you know, as intense as it's been with Sam too, with Samantha, um, it's uh, kind of understandable because it ha has been a very, very intense couple of years. And part of what I've seen with Samantha is that um, their sensory systems are much more sensitive. So they can feel something coming. It could be, let's say in the 33rd dimension for lack of a better term, you know, could be way out there somewhere in the cosmos something coming or um at us and they can feel it before we even know what it is or um there would be times when there would be something coming and there was like a block or um a layer of some sort uh that needed to be cleared and so i would start toning or using light language um and i would clear that layer, whatever it was that wanted to be cleared, I would like, you know, I would clear it and then um, it would come in and I would see it or I would draw it and then she would, she would feel better. So um, I'm realizing that this Y star attunement is what enabled me to kind of feel um, those things. So, and, and, and to clear it with my hands. So I use my hands a lot. And um, I think that's why when I draw images that the energy is getting trans made it onto, um, onto the drawing. So, you know, these little things that are just kind of, uh, kind of coming to my awareness now or making me realize what's, what's been happening. So um, that's what happens with our kids. They hear sounds way high pitches, way before, you know, uh, we might hear them. It might be very, very uncomfortable for them. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, they could be banging their heads, they could be having seizures, they could uh, be lashing out at people um, very aggressively. So my heart goes out to uh, um, all of them out there. 
Um, so dragons and dragons. So from the uh, perspective of the autists, um, they said, they think of dragons and what they're known for. They, they breathe fire. So this is like the exhale of, uh, of source, the spiritual breath of source. And uh, dragons are like a form to be able to carry those codes or intentions um, from source. So as we opened these dragon chakras, we were accessing like deeper into the cosmic field that we had never accessed before. Um, and there appears to be new dragons being born and uh, even what we call dragons, which are like meta dragons from uh, the belly of source or, or formlessness. So um, some people now uh, I activated a, a dragon chakra um, like on myself, you know, a couple of years ago, like in 2019, because I was just guided to. And um, more recently now I've been activating uh, a few other people's uh, dragon chakras. So uh, some people a diamond dragon chakra, some people a dragon chakra. And what seems to be happening now is that there is um, a group of people being called grid workers around the, around the world that um, uh, we can open these uh, either diamond dragon chakras or dragon chakra as well uh, to access these spiritual breaths. And it's going to enhance the grid work to clear ley lines open, dormant ley lines open new ley lines for the planet that will help cleanse the planet. So I'm, I'm putting this out there for, you know, if you know people that are grid workers, not everyone is a grid worker. Um, and, you know, I don't mean that to, you know, say that to be exclusive or anything, but it just depends on what your mission is and how your uh, physical body is, is designed. Grid workers are usually people, they naturally are drawn to areas uh, on the planet and they feel like they're there to do something or you're guided to do a meditation and you're shown a certain area or underneath uh, on the earth and you're asked to clear it or do something with that. So those are kind of the natural um, uh, grid workers. And some people, I did a couple activations with people, they didn't see themselves as a grid worker, but clearly they had just moved to a new place and it was like, I think they want you to do some grid work there. Um, and in order for me to easily open uh, these kind of chakras, you have to have your at least your 12 tree grid uh, functioning well. So, you know, I just wanna, I just wanna um, say that, put that out there that uh, for people who have this uh, 12 tree grid activated and functioning, I can pretty easily open, you know, these, these chakras. If not, then um, it'll take a few sessions and I don't know how many if for people out there who are seeing this and, you know, are interested in that. Um, uh, it takes a few sessions to uh, begin to um, open the light body spheres, clear the spheres, you know, depending on, and we also have attachments, entity attachments to our light body. And there's a lot of star seeds um, who have undergone, um, who may have undergone like sexual abuse or satanic abuse, and they have uh, entity attachments and um, the satanics and luciferians do that so that they can try to try and stop uh, the star seeds. So I just wanna put that out there as well. Um, so this is uh, something Sammy, um, it was her birthday last week or two weeks ago on July 7th and she wanted me to draw this Herkimer diamond, um, representation of a Herkimer diamond. Um, and it felt like to, by doing that, it was activating her Herkimer diamond light body uh, grid. And 
um, it helped make her, it helped her feel stable. I noticed she was destabilized. And so I drew it as fast as I could and um, it helped give her, give her stability. And so she was sharing kind of my light body at the 2D level. Um, and so now as she's embodying, we're uh, kind of separating out our, our individual light bodies and, um, you know, building a new, new connection. So yesterday she had me draw this. Um, so this is Sammy's uh, Hragen Chakra and this is uh, my Hragen Chakra. And um, I have to finish this today, add these pieces to it. Um, so this is an eye, of course, obviously, eye of source, you know, add an eye into the field. Um, so if you can kind of feel into the background, you know, it's going deep into uh, fields that um, we didn't have access to before. And this is the way I see them. It's like, it's like an eye um, uh, peering out from the, the cosmos, so to speak. Um, okay, so the other piece, I know there's a lot of information, but uh, so the other piece, the next piece that's important that's happening now is that um, the soul of Tara, which has been coming for a while, so this was drawn on 2.21.21, um, is uh, now anchored to Machu Picchu in Peru. So in order to get stability, so there's like one, one soul of humanity and we all operate from that one soul. So apparently, and this is from um, uh, energetic synthesis, apparently the soul, the, the world soul before was located at Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And you all know what that area is like. So this soul of Tara, the world soul, has now been placed in Machu Picchu in Peru. Now the um, Tara, as some of you know, it was the original 5D planet of an avatar human and it was less dense, we were less dense than, we were never meant to be this dense um, uh, in 3D. So the world soul of Tara, the fifth dimensional soul, and that means we can go higher from there. That's the base um, frequency of 5D. So there still is a 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D, and, um, but it's functioning differently now connected to um, um, these higher harmonics. So with the soul of Tara being planted, anchored into the planet, it gives it stability. And I remember there was a day when Sammy was, um, again, dysregulated because there were all these really, really high frequencies vibrating. Um, and so I could tell that it needed to anchor that and so when I anchored to connect it to uh, Machu Picchu, we were able to get those higher high, high frequencies kind of stabilized in the body. Um, this came in, in obviously in 2020, the, uh, she's a nature goddess of, of Tara. Uh, and so she is now activated and um, there are these elemental spirits and nature spirits uh, for that supports a 5D uh, planet as well. So there's lots of positive things happening and all the pieces have to come together in order for us to, to do that. So again, we are one human soul and um, each expresses their unique gift based on your unique personal soul matrix from that one soul. So each of us is still going to be unique and how you're gifted is by your DNA. So 
it, you know, it, it's kind of, I think people can get kind of confused that it sounds like hive mind and they try to twist that concept around that um, we're all one. And so we're going to make you all one and we're going to make you all think the same. We're going to, you know, program you so that you all function as one. But organically speaking, if we are connected to the one soul and we know that we're expressions of God and we're each unique expressions, then there is no reason to try and make us uh, think in the same way because we will naturally, each of us know what to do. We will each have a role and we will co-create something different. And we have the freedom to co-create uh, infinitely, but it will be in balance and in union with uh, the planet and with God's source and um, each other. So that high mind uh, Borg thinking is not, is not the way to go. And there are new sciences, new technologies, you know, that these new kids are going to um, create in, in the future. So it's, it's much more um, elaborate and beautiful than we can even, even imagine. And if you remember that, that in that ninth chakra and the brainstem of that law of abundant realities, that's kind of what that means is that we co-create our realities and there are an abundance of realities. There's my reality, you know, that I can create for myself. But then, you know, as we come together with others, we co-create something else, you know, uh, together. So, you know, no wonder that they went after the brainstem to, in, to put a lot of implants and programs, sphere programs um, into that brainstem and keep us functioning in emotional dysregulation and uh, confusion. So, you know, that's a really another important law from those galactic suns. So let's see. Yuckety, yuckety, yuckety. Yeah. So on uh, July 2nd to July 7th, um, Mother's White Dragon Sun and her Linus came through. Uh, and I started seeing it and when I started drawing it, it was, uh, it took me a few days to draw it because it was so um, intense. It's anchored 90 billion years in our future. So that means that's as close as it can come. Uh, and I know that sounds kind of um, confusing to say that it's 90 billion years in our future, but what it means uh, in, in future, think of future as in that upward spiral um, of ascension going upwards in vibration. So that's as close as it can, it can come to us, but it means it's in our time matrix. If it's saying that it's in billion years, that means it has a vector, a time vector. So it's accessible and it's emanating from there. And this lioness, this white lioness also came through and she is the return of the undistorted mother and feminine principle. And um, again, we, it's not to think about it in any sex as male, a man or a woman, but that feminine um, mother principle, which has been so distorted and we've seen it playing out in our world with, I think Johnny Depp's, um, I don't know, divorce trial or whatever it was. I didn't see it did watch any of it, but I just heard from other people and how um, much his uh, spouse, uh, the the kind of the archetype that she uh, seemed sounded like she was representing. So we've had a distorted masculine. We also had a distorted feminine that we've been um, operating on. So what this true undistorted feminine mother principle looks like, you know, again, you can't dictate it, we can't legislate it, we can't make anybody think a certain way. It's, um, we have to allow it to organically surface, you know, what is it gonna look like as we evolve into, into this? 
So here's the mother's white dragon sun up close. And um, a few days ago, Sammy had me draw this. It's the mother's golden white matter matrix. Um, and what does that mean? Well, it feels like um, it will start to help to be begin organizing the, the dimensionalized system, particularly the first, second, and third dimension, which was kind of a free, not, I don't want to say a free for all, but um, functioning with the uh, second harmonic universe. And also, um, uh, it's like the old frequencies of the first, second, and third dimension we're also still functioning even now with the new frequencies that um, had been coming in. So the first, second, and third dimension, the old uh, dimension dimensions, with each of those dimensions and the subharmonic bands, there's also like time vector codes. So um, what we're feeling now more intensely in the last several weeks is that a disruption to those old time vector codes. Um, they're being now uh, washed out. I don't know if they're gonna be completely deleted all at once, you know, it might be a little, a bit too much, but um, you know, more people are feeling like old patterns are coming up or old stories are really uncomfortable in that uh, lower, entire lower, pelvic area, um, but this uh, white matter matrix is going to start to organize uh, the entire dimensionalized system, but particularly in those lower three dimensions, quote, lower three dimensions. Um, so we're supposed to start feeling more organized again going forward. Um, and I, know, and I know it's not easy. So we're getting a lot of information besides all the other, you know, and I've drawn it and presented it at different times or they're on our webpage, website, in old blogs and things like dragons, diamond suns, all kinds of things that came in before. And so most recently this year, is all the cubes that are coming in. So these are cubes to, to rebuild the new, um, the cubes are either to help realign and reset things or the, some of the cubes are to delete. So these cubes are for um, the metals to reset um, the metals in our world. Uh, cubes for the plants cubes for the ocean life. I'm just, you know, showing, showing a few here because I've uh, presented some of the other ones. You know, I share more on our Patreon pages because um, it's been a little bit easier to do that. Um, some of these things are happening so fast that I don't really have a chance to um, write a blog about it or um, even keep up with our, our website. Uh, these are some of the other things that we received in 2020 time vector codes um, that we received. This one is to clear timeline corridors. So we've been getting all this information. We've been getting all the pieces um, in these last four or five years, lots of resets and realignments. And so now we have all the pieces to uh, really begin stepping onto the new 18 dimensional um, universal time matrix. So the other thing to, um, let me go back for a minute. Uh, so the current status to move forward. So we have all the pieces. We have newly constructed universal system or architecture. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. If you imagine yourself as a soul, so outside of time and space, then our dimensionalized system is like the soul coming in onto a canvas to have an experience in time with time 
and with these kinds of unique frequencies that are um, unique to the universal time um, matrix. So that's kind of my sense of how the autists see it and feel it. They're like souls for an experience and you're um, engaging a canvas to uh, co-create realities. Uh, so we've talked about, yeah, so we have the light body system, new mathematical laws, dragons and dragons to continue to bring new codes or intentions from source. Um, and so it feels like with, the, with these access points too, like whatever we need, they're going to, uh, these new creation technologies are gonna come, you know, to us. So whatever snags we may uh, encounter as we go forward, um, we're gonna be given a remedy. So there's been cube activations. And again, cube as the element of earth is about manifestation. Now we have the mother's dragon, white dragon sun um, to organize the new dimensionalized system and the subharmonic layers. And the other thing that, let me add one piece about the clearing, especially in the lower three chakras as well, is that sometimes in the clearing, you can, you might encounter like negative entities or dark kinds of thoughts or, or um, ugly patterns and things. And it could be, um, since we're made of earth matter, it could be clearing from the earth. Uh, and remember that since we're made of earth matter, some of these things were literally like imprinted right into our flesh. And so as it's clearing and we're clearing timelines uh, from ourselves, from our lineage, that you might encounter um, dark thoughts, um, these strange looking beings or these little strange looking entities or strange looking elementals. Uh, or um, negative, what looks like negative nature spirits. So, you know, keep keep that in mind, and you you know take a step back um, and just observe. Now, the world soul as Tara is now being implanted and activated in Machu Picchu. So, like we, we like have all the pieces. We have everything we need <laughs> to activate the new web, the new website. Um, so, just as an FYI, this is what we. I've been using in um, our Patreon meetings. Uh, this is sort of our platform. So as you can see the Dantians, these horizontal Dantian energy lines. These have been the tr three traditional ones through the, the head, um, the high heart and around the sacral area. So we uh, have been using another one that goes through the still point uh, to enable us to hold I don't know, higher aspects of soul would be, help us be stable. And this is a fractal body chamber um, so that each person can at all at macro and micro levels um, repattern ourselves as um, as we do the energy work and the energy energy processes. So we're gonna get I'm gonna get into the meditation next. So it might be kind of intense for some people if you're not used to our energy. Um, so, you know, just ask yourself if this is, feels like the right time for you to do this energy process. If not, that's okay. Um, we also have the free galactic sun meditations. If people are wanting to uh, engage, work with, those uh, meditations. So if you want, if, uh, and those meditations can be kind of intense. So if it seems intense, you know, just take it slow, but you wanna continue on with it. The other thing that you can do is um, work with this image um, that's also on the website. Uh, it's under if you, the top menu bar, it says Galactic Suns. And this image is also there. Um, my husband had also done a YouTube short video um, that goes through the Galactic Suns. And I'll um, find that link and uh, share it uh, when I share the uh, recording with people. So you can do that. But 
you can literally uh, use this drawing if you're not ready to step into that 18 dimensional uh, chakra system. And I encourage you, you know, to, to go slow. You don't have to kind of take it all on uh, all at once. Um, what you can do is you can, you know, meditating in a meditative state or sitting, looking at this drawing, um, intend to, just intend to hold each of these like um, galactic suns, so to speak, at each uh, level. So, you know, you can start with the, the 12th, the earth star, this is the earth star as well. And, um, and then move and then go up. Okay, and then hit the father arc, the mother arc, and the still point and intend to connect. Uh, so you can, you can start that way as well. We also have some meditations um, on our website and I'm um, gonna offer a coupon code um, so that it's um, half price. It might drop the price on that anyway, uh, but it goes through um, the uh, each of the the galactic suns as well in the in the meditation each one one at a time. So those are a couple of the options um, if you want to use if you want to do this, but it's too intense. I know this is a lot of information. You can download it and watch it again, or watch it in pieces and uh, do the meditation later on. So intention is to clear the lower 3D timelines, bridge all aspects of soul, particularly the sacral, the heart, the high heart and soul star, activate the mother's golden matrix to stabilize the new multidimensional harmonics and subharmonics, activate the 12 galactic sun laws, activate the triune art connection to the body, um, connect to the world soul in Machu Picchu. So this is um, quite a lot. And I, you know, I do the meditation by, um, as I'm guided in the moment. So I don't have it, I don't have it written out. So if you'd like to stay for the meditation, sit in your space. Take some deep inhales and exhales. Activate your central vertical channel or your horror line. We do a lot of toning and light language. It's been sort of my training ground for the last four or five years um, and working with Sam. And really feel into the pelvis, really feeling that breath land all the way down to the pelvic bones. Even feel a clunk that this breath of source, God source, your, of your unique connection has landed, really stabilize in the pelvis. Balance the pelvic bones. Feel your feet. That's it, really breathe down all the way to the feet. Feel the hands, feel the top of your head. It's sort of like a balanced five-pointed star. You're here. We're all in our unique fractal body chamber. And it's also a very protected space. It's just you and God in this space and your soul. All aspects of your soul, all layers of your soul that you have access to in this moment. 
May this meditation be in complete balance and alignment for each of your souls and your soul mission. And that you only take in what is appropriate for you in this moment. So I'm gonna clear all vertical channels. Clear all horizontal channels. Clear all three hundred and sixty degree diagonal channels. So we're going to do this symmetry balance that I learned from uh, energetic synthesis as well. So balance top to bottom, bottom to top, left to right, right to left, inner to outer, outer to inner, front to back, back to front, connecting to four directions, north, south, east, and west, connecting through the high heart into the deeper, field of the cosmos. Feeling the seven higher heavens in this space as well. I'm gonna join a group field now together and creating um, what feels like several Perkrama diamonds. We are protected in this space. We are nurtured in this space. We are in oneness with the planet, the ascending earth. Let's uh, connect to the world soul at Machu Picchu first. Feels like that'll help us get stable. <sighs> doing these dragon breaths to clear your space that connects to Machu Picchu. So you're literally clearing ley lines to connect, to make a clean connection to Machu Picchu and the world soul of Tara. Same, Samantha's adding dragon breaths as well. We're just 
cleared some spaces through Brazil as well. Okay, so I feel like everybody feels a bit more stable now. Take a deep breath again. A few deep breaths. Call forth all layers of your soul matrix. We're going to clear the lower three um, chakras, so to speak, the 3D, 2D, and 1D. just pulling out what is old and you don't need in this moment just intend you need to do it yourselves too intending to just remove the ones that are appropriate to remove today you know it may not be appropriate to remove all of them at once since we still kind of you know moving through and we're just getting this, our, our footing in this new 18 dimensional universe. And we still have to engage the world and its uh, systems. And that's okay. So I see the mother's golden white matter matrix and intend to uh, feel that at, at the lower, that whole pelvic area, help you feel stable. Breathe, just giving you stability. Organizing the harmonics, the new harmonics that are activating. Like diamond light fibers, reconnecting you, reweaving your systems. And we're even creating a new connection to the soul, the personal soul matrix in the pelvic area. And it connects through that sacral. And this gives us the ability to feel the harmonics. So if our um, soul matrix is like the personal soul matrix at the heart level understands light, this soul connection at the sacral helps us understand sound and helps us to vibrate with the earth. So now intend to activate that um, white matter matrix at the level of your heart, throat, and um, third eye, or sixth chakra. 
to organize, recalibrate the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensional layers of your being, stabilizing a new connection with your personal soul matrix. Also now the same thing with um, the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimensional layers of your being. So the white matter matrix brings coherence to that layer. Wee, wee, wee. golden white angels just surround you. They welcome you to this new space. Now intend to activate the white matter matrix to bring coherence to your 10th, 11th and 12th chakras. Feel Holy Mother in our 15th chakra, Holy Mother. I mean, Holy Mother at the 13th chakra, um, which is below your feet. And also it uh, is in the center of the earth. And the 15th chakra, Holy Father. It's deep into the cosmos. Feel your 14th chakra at the still point. We I'm going to go through the 12 galactic sun laws at each chakra point, starting with the earth star below your feet. The, uh, the law of the cosmic Christ consciousness made manifest. The root, the law of structure. (laughs) 
the sacral, the law of omniscient omnipresence. Tokotono wata te 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 wati te tas te te ta wati te kata ta na ta ta te 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 ta wata ta 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 te 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 te. Solar plexus, the law of form. Kortoto ni 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 wa se 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 ti 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 ay 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 ay. The heart, the law of the trinitized form. Kashitoni na na ta 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 ta. Take it away. This is it. It 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 it. Yeah 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 yeah. Ta 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 wa ta. Throat. The law of co-creative abundance. Kanya ta 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 ta. Te 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 te. The sixth chakra, the law of sacred union. The crown, the law of cosmic vision. The eighth chakra, the high heart, the law of consensus. The ninth chakra in the back of the head, the medulla oblongata area, heaven's gate, the law of abundant realities. The tenth chakra, which is about six to eight inches above your head, also known as the soul star. Some call it the soul star or the solar star. The law of unified fields. The eleventh chakra, it's about 18 inches above your head. I'm getting at some people, it's about 24 inches. So um, that is the law of sacred nature. So feel this triune arc now. It connects from the 15th chakra back all the way around. It arcs under to the 13th chakra. So there's the 16th chakra point or it's 16. 17, 18 is in the center. 
feel this wave come through from the seven higher heavens. Energizing those points, 16, 17, and 18. 17 again connects to the sacral on the back. 16 connects diagonally up to the back where your high heart would be. And feel the 18th point from the back going through the still point. And on the front side, at the high heart, the still point and the sacral level feel or visualize that 24 pointed star there to help you adjust. bring coherence to these uh, soul aspects. So at the sacral level, this is a salamander energy that I'm drawing up, or the element, elemental spirit of fire. To the heart, to the high heart and connecting to the soul star or 10th chakra above your head. Activate this symbol to help you stabilize and um, harmonize with all of this. This is liquid fire serpent. Goes all the way down to your tailbone. Actually goes all the way down to your earth star. Bridge all 12 dimensional aspects. <laughs> Feel your tailbone and intend to animate your bone matrix. And really stabilize the bone matrix to help you uh, remain stable and hold this. Activating this uh, crystalline um, deva, stone deva, Rowana. This is all the way down to your feet bones. This is And from your feet and your tailbone intend to connect to either um, the 
the clearest and cleanest crystals in the earth or to uh, tree roots, whichever one feels like it'll give you more stability. Yeah, connecting to um, crystals that are emanating the Sophia consciousness. Activating another symbol, Chawana, goes through your entire being from the heavens, it comes down to man. I'm going to intend to clear out, nullify, delete, dissolve any and all attachments, implants that may have surfaced during this meditation. Just <sighs> intend that they're zeroed out, deleted, dissolved, <sighs> neutralized. <sighs> Let's balance one more time to the heart line. Feeling the pelvis again, breathing down, coming back into presence. Shaking out arms, hands, fingers, toes. Turn your neck. Really roll your shoulders if you need to. Really move that energy through balance one more time the symmetry command balance top to bottom bottom to top left to right right to left inner to outer outer to inner back to front front to back And say to yourself, I am neutral. Holy Mother, Holy Father, Holy Christos, Sophia. We thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today. You'll get a recording if you registered. Um, you have three days to download it. This is basically how we do our monthly um, Patreon meetups. Uh, if you're a cosmic supporter, um, a cosmic member, we meet the third Tuesdays of the month at this time. Um, if you're not guided to join us there at this time, then that's okay too. And you can check out some of our other free material on our website. So thank you very much for joining in. And may you each integrate with grace and ease. Thank you.